Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 27 of the chapter Alcohols, Phenols and Ethers. In the past few videos, I have been telling you about the reactions of phenols. And in the past three videos, we started with electrophilic substitu aromatic substitution of phenols in which we did nitration and halogenation. Then in the previous video, uh, I did Cobes reaction and reaction of phenol with zinc dust. So this is going to be the last video in this on this topic. This will have two reactions that I'll be describing. One is Reimer Timon reaction and the other is oxidation of phenol. So let me begin. In Reimer Timon reaction, what happens? You know we are doing the reactions of phenol. So we start with phenol, and when phenol reacts with chloroform and sodium hydroxide, it results in the addition of an aldehydic group at the ortho position. At the ortho position, an aldehyde group that is CHO group is added. That is what you get as the final product if you look here. The OH is here and CHO is formed. This compound is known as salicylaldehyde and this addition of the aldehyde group uh, at the ortho position is what is uh, with the help of chloroform and aqueous sodium hydroxide on phenol is known as the Reimer Timon reaction. Let me just remind you in Cobes reaction we had uh, produced what salicylic acid and salicylic acid was OH and at the ortho position there was COOH. So it had produced salicylic acid from which we had produced uh, we had prepared aspirin. Just reminding you if you do not understand what I am saying I would encourage you to watch the previous video. So this is what is actually happening in this reaction that at the ortho position an aldehyde um, group is being added. But what are the steps of this reaction? We'll understand that. But before that, let me just read this. As I told you, Cobb's reaction was also an electrophilic substitution reaction. Similarly, Reimer Timon reaction is also actually an electrophilic substitution reaction. But then these named reactions are studied separately because uh, one, they are named, they are special, and usually they are the named reactions are the ones which may, uh, reactions that may be used industrially and therefore they are little important, so a proper name has been given to them. And that's the reason why we study them separately and in exams, it gives the examiner an opportunity to ask you exactly what is this reaction, what is that reaction, so we can name and you must know the reaction. So, this is one of those named reactions, just like Cope's reaction. So it is an electrophilic substitution reaction in this on heating phenol with chloroform CHCl3 in the presence of sodium hydroxide, a CHO group that is the aldehyde group is introduced at the ortho position. The intermediate substituted benzo benzyl chloride is hydrolyzed in the presence of alkali to produce salicyl aldehyde. An intermediate is formed and this intermediate that is formed sub is, sub is a substituted benzyl chloride. So you will get this benzyl chloride and this intermediate will then be hydrolyzed. It will first be substituted then it will be hydrolyzed. So the intermediate substituted benzyl chloride is hydrolyzed in the presence of an alkali that is sodium hydroxide that we have taken as an alkali to produce salicyl aldehyde. Salicyl aldehyde. So let us now just see the steps. Uh, let me explain the steps of the reaction. This was phenol. In the presence of, uh, it, we made it react with chloroform in the presence of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Now the H here is replaced by sodium, right? So it re results in the formation of the sodium phenoxide ion if we ignore the other part. So you get Na positive and O negative. The O negative and H replaces Na. So what if this hydrogen comes here with HOH is water. So water is removed. One water molecule from here is removed because this was H and or this was OH and the H came here. The sodium here took the place of the hydrogen in the phenol, I mean in the OH group. Now, what is the part of CHCl3? At the ortho position, CHCl2 gets added, right? Out of chloroform CHCl3, CHCl2 is added at the ortho position. 
This results in the formation of the intermediate which is called benzyl chloride. Now out of CHCl3, CHCl2 go away, you are left with one chlorine. Now this CHCl3 that went, out of this only CHCl2 is attached on the ortho position. You are left with one chlorine, right? This one chlorine again combines with sodium hydroxide. This breaks down and it results in the formation of sodium chloride, NaCl. And the hydrogen which was present at the ortho position of the benzene ring, that is again used up and combines with the OH of the sodium hydroxide and results in the formation of water. So this should be minus two water molecules. So let me explain it one more time. The hydrogen is replaced, is replaced by sodium. So the hydrogen comes and combines with OH to form one water molecule and the sodium takes its place here to form O negative Na positive. CHCl2 replaces one hydrogen at the ortho position and therefore one chlorine is left and one hydrogen here that was replaced. So CHCl2 got attached here but the chlorine that was left that combines with the sodium here to form sodium chloride and a water molecule the hydrogen which was uh, which was removed that combines with OH and results in the formation of another water molecule right so that is why there should be two water molecules that being clear now you get this intermediate which is benzyl chloride now the reaction continues the benzyl chloride is substituted the intermediate is substituted how is it substituted? You had CHCl2, it combines with sodium hydroxide and the OH from the two sodium hydroxide, you take two molecules of sodium hydroxide. So the two OH ions, they take the place of the two chlorides. So the two OH take the place of two, uh, two chlorines and thus you get CHCl2. You can imagine this to be... Uh, like I could change how it looks by putting a chlorine here and a chlorine here, right? The hydrogen is attached to carbon. The two chlorines are attached to carbon actually. So you get the CH, Cl, Cl. The two OH groups from the sodium and the two chlorines come and form NaCl. So you get two NaCl. Negative means it is lost. It's a product. So out of this, you will get two NaCl and the 2OH will take the place of the two chlorines and result in the formation of this substituted benzyl chloride. All right, it is now a benzyl hydroxide, it is not a chloride. So you get this substituted intermediate, the two OH groups. Now at this point, hydrolysis occurs. What is hydrolysis? Hydrolysis is where due to water, a molecule is broken. So what happens in this? A water molecule is removed from here. So the change that is taking place is the hydrogen. There is a bond between this. Okay. Let me show it like this. Okay. So there's a bond between oxygen and hydrogen. This bond breaks and this bond here breaks. So you get H2O. H2O is removed minus H2O. But this bond breaking means this took this oxygen took its electron and the carbon was left with its electron. This hydrogen took its electron and oxygen was left with its electron. So now there is one electron, let me make it with dots. The H and OH with its electrons moved away and formed water molecule, right? But this CH has one electron here and this oxygen has one electron which I'm just drawing it adjacent to it. These two electrons, or if I draw it here rather, now these two electrons, when they join together, they result in the formation of a double bond, right? They will result in the formation of a double bond. And if it results in the formation of a double bond, the H2O is removed, CH double bond O, or C double bond O with H, the double bond is between carbon and oxygen and hydrogen is attached to the carbon. It's just that for simplicity, we write it like that. 
So you get CHO, which is the aldehyde group, right? As soon as you get the aldehyde group, we now make it react with dilute HCl and the sodium is lost again and it is replaced back with hydrogen. So you will get the sodium will combine with chlorine, result in the formation of sodium chloride and the hydrogen goes back and takes the place, uh, its original place, restoring the phenolic group, that is OH. And it results in the formation of salicyl aldehyde, salicyl aldehyde. It's a little difficult to pronounce. Maybe someone finds it easier. I, it's a tongue twister for me. So salicyl aldehyde is formed. So is it clear what exactly, you know, if you remember where the electrons move in a chemical reaction, you tend to remember the reaction better. You know, you could just, you know, mug up the whole thing. You, it, it is possible, you can just mug up the reaction, but if you try to follow or understand what actually is happening, where is the bond breaking, where is the atom going, that makes it very easy for you to ultimately build a story in your mind. And with that story, when you follow that story through, you can always come to the right products. So this was rhyme Timon reaction. And now the last type of reaction, which is oxidation. Oxidation results in the formation of a quinone, benzoquinone is formed. So when oxidation of phenol takes place, in the presence of uh, oxidation of phenol with chromic acid. Now what is chromic acid? This is sodium dichromate and this is sulfuric acid. So acidified sodium dichromate would be called chromic acid. So oxidation of phenol takes place with chromic acid which is sodium dichromate and sulfuric acid. And when this, this is done, a conjugated diketone known as benzoquinone is formed. What is a quinone? A quinone is a compound in which two adjacent carbons or two carbons in the compound have a C double bond O. Right? C double bond O groups or the double bond O groups are present on two carbons. If they are present on two adjacent carbons, we just call it quinone or orthoquinone. If the two oxygens are at first and third position, it would be a metaquinone. And if it is on opposite, that is one and four carbon, it would be a para-benzoquinone. But in your textbook, we only mention that it forms benzoquinone. Quinone. We do not go into the details of what quinones are. We do not talk of ortho, meta, para. But as we read this, you will understand. You will be able to understand better. So oxidation of phenol with chromic acid produces a conjugated diketone. Conjugated would mean one other than on two adjacent carbons. The double bond O should be there. But in this structure, benzoquinone, you don't see the two O's on two adjacent carbons. So, a conjugated or one, one alternating. It is not even alternating. It's not a metaquinone. So, it is rather a paraquinone. So, a conjugated diketone known as benzoquinone is formed in the presence. Now, what happens? This is the whole reaction as it has been given. Even in the presence of air, this oxidation takes place. It's not necessary that you use acidified sodium, uh, I mean sodium dichromate. In the presence of air also, phenols can get oxidized and they can result in a mixture of quinones. What would a mixture of quinones look like? It would be ortho, meta, para. But they are all, quinones are all, they would be benzoquinones, but they may be ortho, they may be meta, or they may be para. So now, if you did not know that this is only para benzoquinone, you would feel that uh, you would not be able to understand this sentence in the text. Therefore, it's a little idea you should have that this is, and the reason that the uh, mechanism has not been given is because there are different ways in which this benzoquinone is formed. Not only are there different ways of producing it, there are, uh, there are different products also, quinones, which are formed. Therefore, that is kind of a little beyond um, the scope of the textbook. Therefore, it has not been explained. 
So you just study this, that when oxidation occurs, you get benzoquinone and the structure of benzoquinone is this. And this can happen even with just air. Slowly, the phenol, it starts turning its color. It starts turning uh, brown in color. It starts turning darkish, dark colored mixture, a darkish, dark brownish color mixture, which is actually a mixture of quinones, which renders it the brown color. So these were the reactions of phenol. And with this, I will end this video. If you wish to watch the other, with other uh, topics of this chapter, please click the link that appears on top. If you wish to watch other chapters, on, please visit my page, um, that is my channel. You will have different playlists for different uh, chapters. I have also made groups of playlists for different classes like class 11, class 12 and whatever chapters I have covered, you are free to use them. I can vouch for it that they'll be very helpful in clarifying your concepts and building your concepts and they'll be very helpful for you during the exams as they have been over the years for kids. So if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, please recommend it to your friends because as many kids know about it and if as many kids can use it and it is useful for them, my purpose will be solved. So uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye for now.